Hey, this is Charles with Historical Gaming, and I'm here with Kevin McPartland. Um, explain your role in Conquest of Paradise. Uh, I'm the designer of Conquest of Paradise. Okay. And uh, I've designed a few other games that have been published, um, including a, a game that was published way back in 1995. Okay. So that got me into studying about publishing culture. Very cool. Now, this game interested me because I played... Um, a game called Space Empires, which is a 4X type game, and the space, uh, the the 4X mechanic of this, and I know it's not completely you know 4X type, but um, I like the fact that it was lighter and more fun and more approachable by like couples or families or groups of people who are kind of halfway between Euros, and it's got that exploration mechanic in there, which I really like too. So I wondered if you could kind of take me through the game, show me how the game came about. I'm particularly interested in how this area starts here and the, the kind of general sequence of play and how the towels come onto the board. Okay. Well, it, it came up because, of, again, uh, from my experience, it came about because of my experience in studying Polynesian culture. What they did was really amazing. Um, they, experienced, they explored the entire Pacific Ocean in a matter of a few generations before ever being contacted by Western civilization. They did it all on their own. And my question was, how did they do this? And when I looked about it, I said, oh my goodness, this is perfect for me. And uh, I never really set out to do a 4 type game. I set out to simulate their experience. But the funny thing is, is that's what you So you indeed start um, start in the very beginnings of Polynesia. And this, you start just as the map shows on the two characters. Three or four players who start with small, some of the tiles already on the board. Um, but they had, um, their people had come through Melanesia, uh, some relatives went off into Micronesia, and started off in the new culture, Polynesian culture. And the first thing they had to do was explore what was around. And this is represented in the game by all these, uh, these uh, places with white boxes. During the game, you go ahead and draw a chip during. And this is, so let's look at the first X during, <laughs> of Explore. During, during the game, um, let's look at the turn sequence. You start by exploring. And you take your explorer and you send them off into the unknown. Now, where, where would my home area be and your home area? In a two player game. Which is the two player? My home is Samoa. Okay. Your home is Tonga. Okay. That's it. Nothing else is determined. Right. This so is there's no setup occupied. really needed. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah, have very little setup. It sets up. I mean, set up here. Wait, you want to watch that? Up? Okay. <laughs> All right. You start with a couple of pieces. Okay. You face down. We're done setting up. Okay. <laughs> there's a couple warriors there. Okay. Cool. Um, and these places are all new. If you go into these areas, they will spring up and defend themselves. Okay. So at first, it's not an option. And later on, as you develop your empire, it does become an option. But at first, you want to explore what's around. And you just. Step off into the end. And you draw a chip. There's two sides to this chip. One side shows whether you've had an island or you've had an island. And the other side shows how many just knots in a row you have across okay. that. And that gives you an idea of how much trouble you took to find that. And what you do is you put these in the box top and you draw one of, one of the chits randomly. And um, you don't show the other players at first. You keep the space down. You look and you see. This is a useful island, not as useful as your home island, because it's, each of these green squares represents how many villages you have. And so you put the space down, and now you have three not showing. The way uh, the chart works, I don't know if you guys can see the chart, um, but you can see if you have one to four not showing, you can either continue exploring or choose to return. Five knots you have to return, but if you have six or more not showing, you're lost. So average, what would be the average knot you're going to draw? They are two. pretty evenly distributed between one, two, and three. Okay. But what's not evenly distributed is one nice thing about chips is they have two sides. So you can link one side to the other. What's not evenly distributed is that the islands tend to be on three or two knot chips. Okay. And open ocean tends to be on one knot chips. There are, there are, you can never be certain. So right. There are, are uh, exceptions to the generality. So at this point, after finding a decent island, I would be very tempted to not push my luck to just do a turn. Right. Because if I go again and go for another chip, if I pull a three, I'm lost. Okay. That's the bad news. The good news is if I pull a three, it's probably an island. Okay. And if you're lost, 
Yeah, I should have pushed my luck because yeah. if I got two not and yet another eye on it. But if you're lost, you don't lose what you found. It's not that trick. Okay. You just put your keys in the lost box and then you want to explore. Now, stuff. is this your island that nobody can take right now? or is no, this? Okay, that's your island that no one else knows about. Let's say it's dead. Oh, so just the knots are showing up. Oh, oh, I, I'm and, sorry. No, no. Once, I, I, I didn't finish exploring. Once you are Once you're done, you say, okay, I am going to return. And you, you bring your explorer back, and you put one of your little pieces in. That's discovered by the green player. Okay. Now, you, as another player, can send your explorer into here for two, two not pause and also look at it. Okay. And in a three or four player game, the two of you now know what it is, but the other two players don't know what it is. And at any time you want, you can flip that over. And when you flip it over, the, does that become yours immediately? No, it becomes yeah. anyone's. So okay. you don't want to flip it over until you have, perhaps, and let's move on to movement. Right? That's, right. that's the next, yep. next step is, is, is movement. Uh, well, actually, uh, transit movement and, and, and battle. Uh, um, but we'll talk about movement. There's two types of canoes. There's transport canoes and there's war canoes. Both of them have a little two on them. Okay. They move two squares. Um, this one's got a little star that means it's a combat piece. Right. They can fight it in battles. Um, each one can hold one thing. Transport canoes, typically a colony, so you can um, War canoes, typically a warrior band. See the nasty expression. Uh, so, and notice he's got a star on it too. So these two both fight. This is like the Polynesian combined arms team here. Okay. Uh, but first, what you want to do is after you, after you've explored this. Then you would build yourself a colony, and right before you move a colony in, you put your pieces down. Okay. And typically your pieces are face down. And so the other player cannot go into there unless he has a war canoe. And then it, it does battle with So it's not yours, but you have kind of claimed it. Okay. Okay. But then during your building step, after you're done with all your other builds, you can take this colony and you have a free exchange. This in, and you get a point. So a colony is kind of like a mobile village, and uh, now it's yours. Now you control this island. And now, if he sends in war canoes, the fact that you will have local warriors popping up to help defend your place. Okay. And so, so it's um, it's it's going to war is a tough decision, and, and, and often you will have an entire game but no one has any battle right at all. Uh, battle is, is kind of like if you're not finding stuff, if the other guy is running right away with the game, then a few more places as well. People will decide. Now, do you find when most people play this game, they will try to take other people's territory, or do they just kind of concentrate on their own area? It depends on the group. Okay. I did a lot of early play testing in this game with my church group. Very few battles, <laughs> almost none. <laughs> I brought it to right. this convention. I brought it to PressCon. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, this guy's here, yeah. What are you doing to my game? <laughs> and funny. people would just slam each other back and forth. Oh, you said it hit me. I'm going to hit you back. Oh, well, that's nice. It's, it's nice that it can play both ways. It does. Uh, and, and depending on your group, it, it really has takes on a different direction. Right. And uh, let's see. So, okay, so, so I've talked a little bit about movement. There's more to movement, but let's leave it at that. Let's go skip to building. Okay. okay. So let's flip it over. Um, and let's go back to where you were at start. Um, so where are we on the, uh, the okay, sequence? So, uh, okay, I, I skipped turn order. I'll talk about that later. Um, exploration. Like building step, right? Movement, battle, and now building. Okay. Okay. So when building comes along, everybody's, um, uh, everybody counts up the number of villages they have. And at the start, it's easy. One, two. You have, so you have two build points this time. Okay. And with the build points, for instance, you can build one transport canoe, or two. Actually, they only cost one point You can build a colony. You can build a warrior band. You can't even build a war canoe. Okay. Because it costs three points. I mean, they're the most expensive thing on the board. Uh, because they represent offense, offensive capability. You can, that's, you have to have war canoes to attack someone else. Okay. And attacking someone else is expensive. And so that's why it's, it's um, it can cost that much. I'm going to skip this for now. Okay. Villages. If you have a green box, you can build a village there for two points. Okay. So uh, that's why you want to go out and find more, because you only have so many boxes to start with. 
Right. And so that's why you want to go out and find more. These have no defensive value. So, so if somebody yeah. comes and tries to take that away from me and I don't have any warriors to protect it? No, actually, if no, any time you have one or two villages, you get okay. these locals to jump up and help defend. Okay. If you have three or four, you get two of them. Nice. But you start off with some extra defense because you know, the warrior band certainly help in defense. Okay. As well as uh, you can load the module war crew and take part in the attack. Um, but yeah, you've, you've got some inherent defense once you've once you've built up your economy on uh, items. Um, ground boxes. If you spend now I'm going back to improved agriculture. If you spend one point, you can turn that ground box green. Okay. And now you can spend two more points and you can build more. Okay. And, and so uh, So it doesn't provide food for you, it just provides you a place to put another building. You have to go right. through two steps to get to that fourth house. Okay. Right. You are intensively developing this island. Because it has it has the physical room to hold more people, but it's you're terracing the mountains, you're building fish years to you know, you're, you're, it's intensive agriculture, really intensive agriculture. Um, the Polynesians created these tarot fields that were, you know, incredibly, you, you'd think they were uh, you know, high intensity agriculture because they're trying to make the most of the land that they use. Right. So the last thing. Oh, no, I was going to ask. I didn't want to skip around too much. Okay. But as far as victory points go, uh, yeah, let's skip it around. Well, okay, yeah, all right. Because <laughs> like when I'm thinking about playing a game, yes. I always think about how do I get to the victory points? Is it better to spread out and have lots of colonies everywhere, or is yes. it better to have one uh, group of four houses? No, it's same better area? to be spread out. Okay. But before I get to that, the last thing you can build is an arts and culture club. Okay. And those things will often give you victory points. You want to talk about victory points? Fine. We'll there talk you about go. Victory points. Uh, <laughs> That's the key them, to any game. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, uh, so, 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 some of them. Um, don't give you, oh, here's my favorite card, circuit. Some of them don't give you any special event, but, you know, I mean, you've made a permanent impression on world culture. I mean, yeah, the Beach Boys would not exist if it wasn't for Polynesians. That's very true. You know, because they invented no, serpent. Is there a Don Ho card? So, yeah. Tiny bubbles? That's not to turn 587. Uh, uh, you know, pool and dancing, things like this. Nice. You know, and, and of course, you know, everybody knows the Milwaukee statues, you know, and tattoos and things. And, and the idea is, is you buy these cards, and you know, some of them just give you points, but some of them give you, like, this is a fun card. But this, card, this is the uh, religious ceremony. Very cool. When you buy a card, you keep it face down. Right. These cards will stay face down the whole game. They're just a point. But these cards, for instance, this card, if somebody attacks you, sorry, you're having religious ceremonies, which you respect, you have to go home. Go back. Cool. We're not having a battle. That's a good card to have. So, yes, yeah. especially if you're finding stuff doing well. Um, and, of course, tattoos will scare the heck out of your opponents. They can help you in, in combat. And um, uh, poi, I don't know if any of you all tasted poi. It's a wired taste. But it helps to preserve your food. So now you have food that can be preserved so you can take them on longer voyages. Right. It doesn't give you any victory points. It's not it doesn't taste awful. But it does allow you to move faster. What's poi made from? It's made from tarot. Okay. It's, it's tarot root that's been, that's been crushed and partially fermented, and thus it's, it's just, and they wrapped it in, in uh, 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 leaves, I believe, and right. they used it, made little packets and kept coconuts and things, and they would rock, they do this along with their Taste, water water tastes water. bad, lasts a long time. Yeah, they bring it on their double hull canoes, which of course was already invented at the beginning of the game, but this, getting this card seems to be some improvement to them. This is kind of fun, this is the uh, Maori, uh, Ha, which the New Zealand natives married. They built these corporations, which actually the British people, they got hanging on some things. They, this is pre World War I, and, and the Maori understood how to use the defenses, you know, fortifications and defense. And again, no victory points. I mean, you're not doing anything to help the people or emotionally advance, but it gives you advantage. But yeah, so let's talk about victory points. These cards will obviously give you. But victory points are also counted again. Let's put this back over here. Uh, there's a victory point chart. You get one, one victory point for each village. Okay. So they're a big concentration of villages. That helps. That's nice. I mean, if you find, there's, there's no doubt about it that if you find something like Rapanui, Easter Island, you know, uh, and notice I have the Polynesian name on top and the Western European name, the small thing. Or you find something big like Tahiti. That's a good thing because these villages are not only victory points, they help you build. Right. And so, um, but um, the second thing on the line is a controlled island. You get one point per island. Controlled island, you have to have at least one village on it. 
So you get the same amount whether you're paying this or this. You get that, that one point is bonus. So okay. The game encourages a large, spread out uh, empire. Uh, sure, it also encourages a lot of villages, but it also encourages spreading out. Okay. Now, there's other things you might find, which are just plain atolls. And there's a few on the board at the beginning of the game as well. And, uh, yeah, Starbucks. This is where you get your coffee. Um, and I'm trying to find, for the war gamers out there, I'm trying to find uh, Midway Islands. Uh, it's in here someplace. Uh, but they, they look like they're, they're worthless. But if, they, if you incorporate them into your empire, uh, there it is, the last one. Uh, if you incorporate them into your empire, you get half a victory point. And that represents your people stripping the resources. You know, they're fishing their food, they're, they're grabbing the bird's eggs, you know, the ocean birds that nest there, right. and they're, they're, they're exploiting the resources. So now, is this enough to use as a hopping point? Like if you, so, I know your knots only allow you to get so far away, but if yep. you're here, can you get well, to this no, so island? And... The knots are for exploring, okay. but the two is on the canoe, the one with the two. And yes, this helps. So how do I connect yeah. this island and this okay. island as my empire? Okay. Well, the key to that is, now, we talked about transport canoes and loading a column down to a group of two. But there's nothing wrong with transport canoes. If you have a face-up transport canoe, and let's say this is all exploring. Um, if you have a transport canoe in, in each, each place, and you know, uh, what I didn't talk about is half of these chips, I, I kept pulling islands, but half of them are just open ocean. Okay. And so, and including the open ocean, if you also have a transport here, and then finally, you know, maybe maybe here, these are all connected. This is how you establish your empire. This is how you exploit your empire. Okay. And um, that does uh, three things for you. Let's, 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 in fact, let's say that this is out here. And let's say you have a village out here. These are all connected as one economic unit. So now you can combine these and say, okay, now I have five points to build with during my build step, not four and one. Here you have four and one. Here you have five. You can build all five points right here okay. if you want. And even during um, during movement, if you notice, there was this thing called the strange thing called transit. Right. Before you move, you can shift everything. You can shift your war canoes from your home islands out to here to attack something. Okay. So you can first transit and then go one, two. Okay. Or, of course, if you have the point card, one, two, three, and that's a surprise for you. <laughs> so the Wargamer makes me want to ask this question. If you break somebody's chain of supply and attack this canoe and destroy that, what happens to the... Oh, that's, that's, fun. that's fun. Okay. That's fun. That really <laughs> bad, bad, so that messes up your opponent. And it's amazing because you will not lose that combat. Okay. Okay. First of all, he won't be destroyed. He'll run away. Okay. Um, and, um, but still, <laughs> you've just cut his, 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 his link. Now, um, he's having trouble. He can't move pieces out here to counter attack. Okay. Get this far. Right. He can't counter this. He won't count this as an extra victory point for your uh, island group because it's been cut off. Oh, and wow. he can't shift his forces. Those are the three things that these, this chain of transport communities indicates. Right. It right. uh, allows you to do. So, so it almost seems like in a two-player game, especially, you'd be encouraged to go backwards, away from your opponent, yes. in a way. Yes. But you also said that there's some other resources somewhere that uh, you can kind of extend out to here. Oh, right. There's an advanced oh, yeah. tool where... Um, oh, that is an advanced role. I'm sorry. Yes, that's all right. Uh, it's, it's, you can do what the Polynesians did, which is native to South America and back, and brought back sweet potatoes. Okay. Which is native potatoes, of course, native to South America. Right. And yet they are found everywhere in the Pacific. I mean, we're there before the Europeans got there. How did they get there? They don't float. <laughs> so, so what happened was the Polynesians went there, probably traded some chickens. Uh, there's a whole story behind that, too. <laughs> and brought back sweet potatoes. Is that included in the designer notes? Yeah, or something actually, like you know what? Uh, um, it came up at the last moment. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we added it to the box. That's neat. So it's not the side of And there is actually, there's a, there's a 20 page part. There's eight pages of rules, 20 pages of design notes. Because in the design notes, I talk about each one of these parts. Right. And I talk about each one of these parts. That's nice. I like that. I like this, I don't know. And like Twilight Struggle, one of the things yeah. I like about this, each one of the cards explained and the history behind each card. And just reading the rule book is like a lesson in itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is the purpose of going this way? Okay, well, if, if you, once you build up some more canoes and things, and you're not seeing, you're not finding stuff, and you're, you're um, um, 
your, your opponents are well defended, right. say, well, hey, I'm going to go up to these guys. And, uh, you know, just like uh, your Islanders, you're someone will defend, pop up and defend, it, even if you have no one else there. These guys will pop up and defend. And so you have to have a battle with them. And, and you. Um, and, and, you, and you go ahead, and um, if you win, you can take over their islands. And if you don't, you can try again. Okay. And these are the number of battle dice that... No, no. Okay, this is the number of battle people that come up. Right. I should show up my battle ones. These are actually quite simple. Okay. Um, this, this is a, this is a, another advanced one. This is malaria. See the little oh. mosquito? <laughs> nice. Now, the Anisophilus of mosquitoes only came into, into these islands, and actually... So okay. that's why you have big islands, you have two and six chance, two and six chance, one and six chance is a small group of islands, one and six chance because it's you know, half this big group. Right. Um, and so that's the chances of you um, losing a village. Okay. Once per turn you're rolling dice. And of oh, course, wow, okay. Yeah. And so if no one's there, you don't bother rolling the dice. Right. But if you take, uh, for instance, if uh, the Tongas come right. in and take them out of you roll the dice, okay, I'm good this time. You know, and, and, but if you roll six, oh well. We just lost two so that's, that's the you know, endemic malaria taking its toll. Very expensive. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to have to open up another bag here to show you combat. But let's, let's say, let's say you attack here. Okay. Okay. And let's say, let's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, green is defending. So green is defending. And let's say they have a village here. And they have, a um, couple couple pieces that are that are uh, face down. You don't know what they are. But you're going to attack it because mo most of the pieces uh, most most there it is. Uh, most of the pieces stay face down. So you don't know what's there, right? But you do have one of these things up because he's he's part of your chain. Right? You don't forget your, your chain. And then and these dash dash of pieces come from. From somewhere in somebody else's empire. And what they do is, is they bring a war canoe. And riding on that war canoe is a warrior bear. Okay. And um, another. Look, they also brought a transport canoe. And you can, in fact, bring a warrior on a transport canoe. But we'll see what happens there. And let's say this group, and I'm not saying, yeah, obviously, it's not. Unknown, it's been explored. And they come in here and go one, two. Right. We're having combat. Okay. And so you go ahead and mark the place where you're having combat. And you just array your forces somewhere. So let's say, let's say you array them right here. You're trying to get rid of some of the fun. <laughs> and um, you, you put the forces off to one side. And the, defend, the attacker reveals his pieces. The defender reveals his pieces. Okay. That's a rumor. You can build a rumor anytime you want. If it's exposed, it goes away. Okay. Doesn't have doesn't take part. So and does a rumor cost you anything to buy? Or no, you, during the combat uh, during the I'm sorry, during the building step, just slip one in. Oh, okay. And, so it's uh, like a dummy counter, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's a dummy. Yeah. We, we can translate it. <laughs> 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 right. So this is your supply chain. Right, right. Your I know, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> this, this is how I relate. I'm like, rumor, you know, yeah. 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 Um, but I, I prefer that this is combat, not a battle. Right. Um, and um, now, mind you, uh, the green is defending, so he had one village, right. so he gets one local warriors, militia, if you want. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and now, okay, now some of these guys say stars. Right. And the non star people go in the back. So, and you think, okay, you've got three in the front, one in the back. Wow, this guy rode into battle on transport. Boy, that's embarrassing. Oh, okay. So it's on these guys. And so what you do is, is you simply look at the battle, battle results. So essentially, there's no point in ever doing this, right? So, no, what will happen is, is if you win the battle, you'll be there. Okay. Or the next time if someone tries to take it back. Okay. So, so the, sometimes we see that happen. Not, not too often. But, but I always include it in the examples because this is what happens. Right. This is, this is why you need war games. Okay. Because you cannot attack with even a warrior. Riding on transport. So, um, so uh, the attacker rolls the dice. This is not. Don't think of this as an open field with, you know, these guys lined up. No, no, no. Five returns, six hundred mile hexes. 
right? Okay. So this is a series of battles being fought for these islands. So some of the battles are sea battles, right? Some of them are land battles. And it's a series of battles being fought over a period of perhaps years, perhaps just months. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the attacker rolls the dice and he rolls a five. And you see that is the defender of hands. So one of the people in the front row have to be in also Okay. However, both people still have people in the front row. Well, yeah. Okay. Right. So the attacker keeps rolling, the defender never rolls. Right. The okay. defender just hopes for the attacker to mess up. Okay. <laughs> it okay. shouldn't matter, right? I yeah. mean, it's random. So it kind of streamlines it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. I mean, because it would just, and it really helps when you're attacking into the uh, independent island groups. Right. You know, right. No one has to play that. Exactly. Because okay. the attacker is wrong. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so the attacker rolls again, and speaking of it's random, this is the Okay, the attacker rolls a one. What happens? Attacker removed. Attacker removed. So he has to actually take one of his pieces in the front row. Right. Uh, you know what? Which is cheaper? This is cheaper. Okay, here's he's removing the less expensive piece. So that is removed from his inventory. Yes. Not, not retrieved back to yeah, the back row. Back to, okay. Yeah, not to the back row, but to his inventory. All right. And then he rolls again. And, and I'm going to make it so that, okay, good. So he rolls a four. Which is defender pins. Okay. Now, the defender leaves yeah. the back row, but he no longer has anyone in his front row. He okay. Loses. He, he lost that. So, does he lose all of these guys? No. Nope. What happens is, well, this guy goes away. He's, he's the local warrior. He, he goes away no matter what. Even if he won, he would, this guy would go away and come back and go to another game. But he goes away. This guy loads up onto this canoe. Let's get out. Let's get out. Okay. And does this uh, town stay here, or does that okay. town go away? Good question. What happens now is the tortoise people take over the silent group. Okay. This goes away. Unless, unless he wants to pacify you. In order to pacify it, he can take anyone who started in the front row and ended in the front row. Uh-huh. Right? So in other words, not the guy who, who, who was killed, right? Right. even if... Retreated, and certainly not this guy. You can remove this and save the build. You're swapping the build. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And so that represents the warriors pacifying the locals and saying, okay, you're going to stay with us and you're going to do this forever. And then these guys, and this is the advantage, this guy can go face down, he can go face up. Battle mark goes away, move this island up. Very cool. I tell you, I can't wait to play this. Uh, I've got a local gaming group. I've been wanting to play for a long time. Um, but you said there was a second edition coming out. Then uh, what's going to? Oh, nice! Yes. <laughs> okay, one of the things is don't be disappointed if you go out and buy a copy that now used and set Right. You don't get. I made these myself. Um, you, uh, you get uh, village markers. If you're on the back of it, you go through the agriculture. That there is, 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 is a village. You just have these markers. Okay. Um, so um, yeah. the. Second edition, deluxe edition, which is going to be published by GMT, please go out and pre-order it, um, will indeed um, include wood huts that are not colored with magic marker, but rather <laughs> painted to match colors. There's been a complaint that they're being a little bit too pastel, and they're going to bump up the colors so it's easier to tell the difference. And also the, the cool little uh, Polynesian symbols. These are real Polynesian symbols from uh, Eastern Island. Cool. You can see this one. You can see the other one so good. So we're going to bump this up. We're going to fix that. But that is going to be a mountain jam. Um, where um, it's, it's the house, the GMTC House Magazine, C3I Magazine, published a set of random events that's used as the add on. Nice. That's going to be in, in nice. the game. Nice. Right? So you're going to get the little, and again, yeah, don't be disappointed that the, your explorer does not have a little plastic stand. It'll right. be in the deluxe edition, but it's not in. In the first edition, that's awesome. Um, but but otherwise, it's going to play the same. Um, uh, but it's it's, it's going to be much nicer. And I, I I'd like the, the, the color page is just really helping. Well, literally pop. Yeah, <laughs> really I can't wait to see it. It's going to be awesome. Me too. <laughs> it's been really nice meeting you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you for you. showing me the game, and uh, I really look forward to your new game coming out and playing your old one too. Yeah, well, so. I look forward to exploring your channel. <laughs> okay. <at> all your <laughs> other videos. Well, thank you. Thank you.